2024 is here and a lot of really cool changes are coming to React. So in this video, I'm going to explain to you guys six concepts that will become completely obsolete in 2024. How's it going everyone? Uh, I'm back here with another video and today, like I said, I'm gonna be going over six different things in React, which you most likely will never use again uh, by the end of 2024. This whole video is inspired by a tweet from someone from the React dev team. So I'm gonna link that tweet in the description. Um, but also I wanna differ it a little bit from the other video I made where I just explained the changes that are happening. Here, I'm gonna show you guys some code examples of differences of what you might encounter between how you code react right now and how you will be in the end of the year when the new version comes out. Before I start talking a little bit about the video, if you guys could leave a like in the description, I'll massively appreciate it. I'm back at YouTube as you guys have seen in the past month and I'm really liking it. So be prepared for a lot of really cool content uh, coming out. So if you guys could leave a like and subscribe, I would massively appreciate it. So the first concept that will be obsolete by the end is actually one of my favorite ones because I hated how React handled this specific thing. And obviously I'm talking about using forward ref to be able to pass refs to your um, to a child component. Previously, if you wanted to actually pass up uh, some ref, you would have to use the forward ref uh, wrapper around your component. And in certain situations, you would have to use the use imperative handle hook um, to do something like um, calling a function um, in the child from the parent. And in some situations, you would need to use the use imperative handle hook to do something like calling the a function from the child in the parent, you know, like situations like that. So now instead of using the forward ref wrapper, you can straight up just pass in the ref as a normal prop, similar to how um, you don't have to define it. It's similar to how you currently can access a, a children component from the prop by just saying props.children. Um, you can see a cold example on the screen right now. And the way that this works is by utilizing the new React compiler that will be coming to the new version. This will simplify code by a lot because to be honest, um, this is a topic that I told people to avoid because uh, the use cases is minimal, in my opinion, compared to most of the other hooks and, and com, uh, custom functions and stuff like that, that you might want to use. Um, and to be honest, it just looks overly complicated. It made people uh, think that React is more complicated than it actually is. So I think this is a great change. And it's not a breaking change, because I do believe that you can still use forward ref, it will just be deprecated. So or it will give a warning saying that it will be deprecated. So for now, uh, we'll start transitioning so that companies and people who already have that pattern in their code, they can actually start using the new one and slowly migrate to the new version. The second concept that will now become obsolete is the idea of using the react lazy function in order to do some code splitting and lazily load your files. So I've made a video in the past on how to improve your performance uh, in your React application by just doing something like what you're seeing on the screen, which is you just lazily load a component or a different asset file or something that you have in your application. What this does is it basically defers loading the component until it is actually rendered. So in this case over here, when we import the about.js component, so in this case over here, when we import the about.js component, it will actually only load when the about.js component is required to be rendered in your application. So it improves performance because you're not loading everything at once. You're making it through steps and it just, it's just a simple change that makes everything, makes a huge difference, right? But now, rather than relying solely on using the lazy function to lazily load your components, the React Suspense compiler, also known as RSC, in conjunction with using promise as child syntax, which is something that we're gonna talk even more now in this video, can be utilized to replace that. This approach allows components to be loaded asynchronously through the React Suspense compiler with the component in itself being encapsulated within a promise as child construct and thus just facilitating the whole uh, loading process in my opinion. This one is really cool, but to be honest, it is something that I 
don't see you having to do it on your day-to-day -day basis because like to be honest you can do all of your uh lazy loading <laughs> at the end or in the beginning of a project you're not constantly doing this so i don't see this as a major change but it is important nonetheless now the third concept that will become obsolete is very related to the fourth one as well which is um, things that will be replaced uh, by the use hook so the use hook is something that we've talked about in the past and it's not something technically really new but it will change a lot of things in this version for example if you're trying to throw a promise uh, you can now just put the promise inside of the use hook similar to the fourth thing which I was gonna talk about, which is putting a context inside of the use hook. So instead of um, directly uh, handling the promise in a different way, you can just put the promise inside of the use hook and that will be handled perfectly, especially now with things like the React Suspense compiler and the Suspense component. Uh, there's a lot that you can do there. Uh, with the context example, um, you can actually, instead of directly calling the use context hook, which is something that we've dealt with in the past a lot, you can just, Instead of that, just put, use the use hook and put the context that you're trying to uh, get values from directly. So it's basically the same thing, but instead of using a different hook, you're just uh, using the use hook for everything. This one is not that uh, big of a deal. It's just a minor syntax change. And I believe all of the other things will continue as well because they don't want to break all the apps that still use the use context hook or that handle promises in a different way. But it's still really cool that they're giving us easier options to work with. Now, since we are in the topic of talking about contexts, uh, there's also another minor change that won't be a breaking change, but will just make things easier is a simple syntax change from whenever you need to define a, a provider for a context, instead of just having to write the component like context.provider and wrapping that around everything you wanna pass the, the provider with, you can just use a context uh, component, right? You just pass the context, you pass the value. It doesn't have to have the dot provider. And that's small, but again, it's just trying to make everything easier to understand, uh, which I think is a pretty good approach. They're not breaking anything. They're just making things easier. Now, I kind of bundled three of the chain, uh, concepts uh, together, um, but <laughs> now we got into the last one, which is actually the most important one. And I've talked about it in my previous video, but I'm going to go more in depth in this video, which is you'll never have to use um, either memo or the use memo hook or the use callback hook. Now, in order to explain to you guys why this is major, I'm gonna show you guys code examples of when you might wanna use those right now and how it's gonna look in, at the end of the year. So previously, the use memo hook and the use callback hooks were considered the, probably the two most scary looking hooks in React. And the reason for that wasn't because it's actually complicated, because it is not. It's just because um, they made it such that it is so vague when you need to use it that people would never understand when to use it. So they would either overuse those two hooks or underuse it, like never use it at all. Now, the idea behind them is whenever you have to use uh, to create expensive calculations, for example, for a value that depends on some sort of a value that will change depending on a value that is also depending on the state of the application. An example is what I'm showing you guys on the screen. Um, you have some sort of variable that you want and um, it is dependent on an expensive calculation that comes from a prop, right? So in this case, we have here a variable called process data. We're setting it equal to uh, the result of an expensive calculation, which is the filtering, the sorting, the mapping, all of that. And that all is ha like all of that is happening from the prop. So what's going to happen here if you don't use a use memo is every time this component re renders, it will recalculate that information. Now, Technically you want that, but only when the specific variable that you're actually passing in and using for the calculation, the data prop is actually changed, right? You don't wanna just recalculate that even when the data is not changed. So in this case, what you can do is you can just wrap it around with the use memo, pass the data into the dependency list, and now it's only going to recalculate that whenever the data is changed. Same thing, exact same thing with the use callback, but that one is even less uh, of a use case because it is when you wanna, uh, when you have a function, right? Instead of just uh, having the process data variable, you could have a function called process data and which returns the actual processed data. And 
if you use the use callback and put the data, it won't recalculate all the stuff inside of that function and it won't recreate that function because it knows that the data variable hasn't changed. Now that's extremely important and I've used it in the past a lot for a lot of different situations, but I've also found myself not noticing that I needed them or found myself um, just overusing them because what exactly is an expensive calculation, right? The React Dev team provided us um, kind of a benchmark, but at the end of the day, like, um, what really, like, how, how do we decide that, you know, it's very vague. And it is good that now we don't have to use that because with the react compiler that is coming in the new version of react, uh, it will provide automatic memorization. So the compiler will automatically check to see if there are situations like the ones we mentioned, uh, where the use case of uh, use memo or use callback is important, and it will automatically memoize for you. So you don't have to do that. Now that's great because I can't wait to see all the use memo calls being removed from uh, code bases that I work with. Uh, I think that it will be actually important and I can't wait to see my new students that are gonna learn React next year uh, to not have to learn this. So um, I think that's a pretty good change. It's uh, mentioned in my previous video of the changes that are coming in React 19. I said it's probably my favorite one. And yeah, that's, that's basically it. So in this video, I hope you guys saw that we're gonna change a lot of our syntax. Uh, we don't have to relearn anything. They're minor things, but at the end of the day, they're gonna help a lot in the long run. There's also some a tweet that I saw by Andrew Clark, the guy from the React Dev team that posted this tweet, and he mentioned that they are going towards removing the use effect. That's the final stage of the changes that we're, we've been asking for a while now. Now, for those who are in love with the use effect, um, I'm telling you, um, React Dev team is doing as best as they can in order to remove it because 99% of the people are using use effects wrong. I can make a video on that if you guys are interested, but it is actually something that will help everyone in the long run, especially those who are not aware that what they're doing is wrong. So yeah, that's that's pretty much it for this video. Really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like down below and comment what you wanna see next. Subscribe because I'm posting once or twice a week and I would massively appreciate it. And yeah, that's basically it. Really hope you guys enjoyed it and I see you guys next time. Yeah.